Has the team you any injury concerns and a big Mikel's back for tomorrow night? Uh, well, Mikel's back, yeah. yeah we've had, we had an injury to Lanzini and an injury to uh, Arthur. So they're, they're both doing okay, but Arthur might, Arthur's going to see a specialist about his knee. And uh, Manu's needed a little bit of time with, uh, with an Achilles injury, so we're, we're not quite sure about, about Manu. Uh, Mick's returned and uh, he's had a couple of days training, so, so hopefully he'll be fit. Um, obviously, you're fighting on three fronts and you need a big squad for that. How much of a disappointment was it on Saturday that some of those French players didn't really step up and grab their chance? Well, all those French players have been absolutely brilliant in every European game. I think we were one of the only teams who, except for the last game, we've done unbelievable. So. I think this week in the FA Cup was difficult for many teams. Maybe it was after a, a, a week's break. Maybe it just was the way the FA Cup was. But ultimately, those fringe players you're, you're sort of referring to have been fantastic for me this season. They really have been. On the right, obviously, it's going to go to you miss up on Saturday. And then, I don't know if you had a chance to see it, but it didn't be after the game as well. He's so impressive, not just as a player, but as an individual. Second wife, right away, face as well. You must be immensely proud of him. There have been comparisons to Stephen Gerrard at the weekend as well. Just what is his potential in the game? Well, as a, an individual, he's a, he's a really improving young man who's uh, you know, gaining a lot of experience, getting better. He learns an awful lot from Mark Noble. He should have said many times he should, he should look at Harry Kane and Harry Maguire and all, the, all those senior players he's, he's involved with, with, with England and take as much from them as he can because in the future I've got no doubt he's got a great chance of going on to be a, a future England captain so he should, he should look at them so we're really pleased to have him and uh, uh, you're right what you say he's an impressive young man On your option number tomorrow night I think I worked out that you were 12 years old when Roy Hodgson first started managing uh, and 46 years later he's still doing it I mean what words do you have for just his, his hunger his passion for the game and do you see yourself still managing when you're 74? Uh, well, I don't think so. But uh, I don't know if Roy was saying the same when, when he was 58, the same as me, so I don't know what he, what his thoughts were. But all I can say about Roy is I think that his love for the game is incredible. And I think to be to be to have any level of success or longevity, you have to have a, a huge love of the game. I mean, Roy, Roy once again, has shown that, uh, that he's got that. And I think if there, were, if there was MD I ever felt that could... That could help Watford stay up or keep them up, I think Roy Hodgson would be would be the name I'd, I'd pick. Obviously, Big Sam would be another one, but but Roy, with his experience, you know, will give them every chance. He's a really good coach. Uh, as I said, he's someone who's managed at all different levels. So I think Watford will give themselves a, a really good chance of, of staying up. Uh, and just one final question for me, David, completely off the topic of tomorrow night. I saw Vernon Kay tweet a photo this morning of himself and you and Gareth South gave Roberto Martinez, say Brailsford, amongst others, at the Super Bowl three years ago in Atlanta. I wasn't aware you were a big NFL fan, but who are you calling this week then? Is it Rams or Bengals? Uh, well, you know, I, I had an unbelievable time and it was the sort of things when I was out of work I was doing, I was trying to go and watch other sports and at that time I was actually involved with uh, a leaders in sport group who went over to the, the final in Atlanta and we had a brilliant time, I have to say, both uh, professionally and uh, in our own time as well. And I was really fortunate to be with with some really good uh, coaches who who a lot of the stuff that they've done over over years I've used as well now and, and listened to them. But we had a great time. So uh, probably the Rams really would be my would be my choice. Of, but I'm not a huge huge fan. But after going to a, a Super Bowl, I've got to say, if MD ever gets the opportunity to go to one, you should go. It's a, it's a brilliant experience. Thanks, Thanks Thank you, Jamie. Emma from PLP, please. Hi, David. Um, just a couple of questions on Watford, really. Um, they come to you tomorrow night knowing that a win would lift them out of the relegation zone. I just wondered what you've made of the relegation fight this season. I mean, usually at this stage, you've got at least one team that's kind of being cut adrift, that doesn't seem to be the case. So for you, do you think it will go down to the wire and can you see what could be one of those teams involved? 
Well, I think a few weeks ago, you know, people were beginning to already draw conclusions who the teams were, you know, sort of drawing it down to maybe three or four teams. But uh, I think the bottom teams, Norwich, have had a couple of wins, you know, uh, Newcastle have had a win as well. So there's just signs that they're, that those teams are trying to get a wee bit better. And, and we know that against Watford, we'll have to play very well to get a result. So I think Watford putting Roy Hodgson in charge will give them a great chance of, of avoiding relegation. But uh, I've got to say, we were in that position at West Ham a few years ago, and it's a horrible position to be in. You know, it, it makes it it makes it makes really difficult. Every game becomes a, how can we get some points? How are we going to you know, get out of this situation? So I've got to say, I'm glad it's not me who's there, but uh, but I have been before, and uh, as I said, it's not, it's not nice. Uh, with regards to your preparation and your approach to the game, I think you only played Watford a month or so ago. With that, you'd expect there isn't a huge amount of homework to do, but actually if you found it is the opposite, they've got a handful of new players in there that haven't been playing in the Premier League very long, um, a new manager of course in Roy, I just mm -hmm. wonder is it one of the harder games actually to prepare for despite the fact it's only a month or so you played yeah. it? Well, as you well know, Emma, there's every every team's got a sort of quick turnaround game in the Premier League, and uh, Watford's our quick turnaround game. Where we, you rightly say, we played them about a month ago. We got a really good result and a positive result. But since then, a lot has changed at Watford. They've brought in a few new players. They've certainly brought in a new manager. So we're sort of coming up against a different Watford team, and we have to be ready and prepared. So we will try and get ourselves as as organised and. Uh, try to understand as much as we can. I mean, we've only seen Roy being in charge of them for one game, so that's not that easy to completely understand. But uh, but overall, uh, they've got roughly the same group of players, albeit they have brought in three or four players in the in the January window. Uh, just finally, you mentioned there Roy's only had one game, um, but he did bring uh, an important clean sheet to Watford, obviously they've had one Well, I think Roy's a really good coach. His teams are really well organised. Uh, over the years, you look at Roy's teams, you know, whether he, wherever he'd been, Palace or Fulham, you know, Liverpool, his teams were always really well drilled, well planned. So we'll expect Watford to be the same. And uh, I think right away he's made an impact because, you know, I think when you're, when you're not doing so well, probably the first thing you have to do is try and stop conceding goals. That's always the key to, because scoring goals is never easy. So you have to try and make sure that you defensively you're strong and uh, certainly in his first game he's got them organised and, and they've got a good clean sheet. Thank you Emma. Thank you. Thanks Emma. Kevin from BBC London. Hey David. Hey, Hi Kevin. Um, with most managers you come up against, well most teams have a new manager, you pretty much still look at the other team. With Roy Hodgson, you've faced him so many times over the years, it must be quite strange, isn't it, thinking about all of that, this is now a Roy Hodgson offers. No, it, it is strange, but it's it's not strange that Roy's back in football because, you know, he's he's been a brilliant football man. And this this again, him coming back again at his age, and I'm saying, oh, I don't know if I could ever do that because it seems that, uh, you know, he's been going on forever, Roy, but he's got a great passion, great love of the game, uh, a drive that he wants to stay out in the training pitch. So, so if MD, MD sort of is good at it, Roy's very good at it, he's very good at his organisation, his coaching, his planning. So I think it will give Watford a really good chance of, uh, of staying up. Is it a balance in your mind? Is it as easy as that, that actually I'm preparing for Roy Hodgson or I'm preparing for Watford? Is it something you've had to weigh up a lot? Well, a little bit because obviously Watford, we, we played them a month ago, we had a, a really positive result against them up there. It's not exactly the same group of players, they've made three or four changes since, since that period. But probably the bigger change is the new manager coming in, probably a change of style. Uh, no, we, we've, no, we've played against Roy's teams many, many times and many times over, over the years. But that doesn't mean to say that it, it has to be exactly the same. But, uh, but there's a bit of both, yes, we'll, we'll, we'll understand Roy a little bit. We'll also understand the Watford players and the ones we played against a month ago, but, but uh, obviously we saw a slightly different Watford team who went to Burnley and got a good draw the other night. Just a final thought um, on the squad players that played on Saturday. How much of a backing is it for them and opportunities? I know at least the January transfer window, you talked it has about it being particular players that have to really fit into your dressing room. You wouldn't want to unsettle what you 
have? How much of an opportunity, how much of a backing is it for them that you have gone with what you've got and you did decide to bring in um, and you perhaps have the targets that you had because you didn't quite find the personalities you wanted? Well, I think the, the, the bit I would say about the, the, the players you're talking about, all those players have been involved in the European Games, have done a great job for us in the, the group stages. They, they've all contributed. So when they're asked to come again and, and play again, I hope they do. We didn't play so well in the, in the cup game, but uh, if you look all around a lot of the cup ties, there, wasn't, there was a lot of performances which didn't maybe match the, the way that everybody thought the games was going to go. But uh, no, we've got lots of trust in them. You know, they'll be needed in the in the run-in. And uh, we want them to keep fit, strong, and uh, and be ready when their opportunity comes. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Ian from TalkSport. How's it going, Ian? How are you? I'm good, thank you. It's scary on Saturday, wasn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying to spell you out of trouble. Uh, Kevin, just tell me everyone knows that. You talked about him today being a future England captain. He's obviously massively important to West Ham, but there's still a lot of people think he might leave in the summer. How much is he going to take to take him away from you? Well, I think I've said everything I have to say about Declan from that point, uh, Moose, because uh, we've spoken enough about him. Uh, I've said it. He's a really important player for West Ham. He's someone who we value greatly. Uh, you can see what he means to the team, and. Uh, I don't really have an awful lot more to say to you, but yeah, he's a he's a really good individual and we're enjoying having him. Would you, would you put him in the category of one that hundred pound players though? Well Yeah. Just interested. Um, moving on from that, uh, how much is it a chance on Tuesday against Watford to get back on the bike and get the performances going again? Well, I'm glad that people are talking about West Ham being in a challenge for the top four because that, that says something of, of where we've come to. Even even last year, we, we probably we were never talked in those terms. We were talked about, you know, could we make a run for Europe? So I think it shows there's been improvement. I think it shows that we are uh, making some strides. We need to keep playing really well. We need to now look at... Uh, last, I think we've got 50, I think we've got 15 league games to go. We have to play really well. The first one's against Watford uh, tomorrow evening, where we hope that we can uh, we can take three points and keep us going. And I've said many times, sort of keep hanging on to the shirt tails of the teams above us and see what we can do because uh, I think the team have played really well for long periods of the season. We've had little bits of ups and downs, but uh, but no more than MDL. So. Looking forward to uh, challenging again in the second half of the season. Uh, and finally, in, how much do you cherish managers like you and Roy? Uh, the Thousand Club, the manager of the Thousand Games. I know he's considerably older than you in terms of age, but in terms of experience, you know, the, the fan always seems to be a bit, a bit younger. You know, let's get younger in, let's get the, you know, the next generation in. But should we not be cherishing the, the likes of you and him without wishing to put you in the oxygen No, no. Well, I'm not, I'm not quite Roy's age yet, but uh, and I don't know if I'll still be managing when I get to Roy's age, but but it just shows you how much experience matters, and it shows you that experience is a big part of football, whether it be as a player or whether it be as a manager. There's so many clubs now uh, have got very good young players, but they also need experience around them. There's lots of clubs who have got very good young managers on the up, but there's also some clubs who have very, very good experienced managers, and, uh, you know... I, I would hope that uh, I was in the category of experienced and uh, Roy's certainly in the category of very good and also very experienced.